This is a review of translations in preparation for the 8th grade STAR test to be taken by geometry students. We've had most of this stuff, if not all of this stuff, during the year in much more detail. So this is an effort to just give you a quick review of the 8th grade level of these topics so that you'll be fresh and ready to take the test. This handout is one that was given in class. It's also available on the website. You can download it or you can pick one up in class. First, we'll look at reflections. All right. Reflections. Reflected, you can imagine that there's a line. That's the mirror. It should look like a mirror image on either side of it. You'll recall from our studies that one thing that you can do to reflect over the axes would be to, uh, if you want to reflect across the x-axis, then you'd multiply the y-coordinates of each vertex, or each point indeed, by negative 1. To reflect across the y-axis, you'd multiply the x-coordinates of each vertex, or each point, by negative 1. That would accomplish the reflection. You may be asked to reflect over a different line. If so, you're just going to have to count. You'll recall that the lines of reflection are perpendicular to the mirror line and equidistant. So you'll count out as we did in class to find out where it is. You're allowed to have colored pencils, maybe bring some and use them. You're not allowed to have a ruler, but you can have the straight edge from your ID and you can use that to do this. You're also allowed to have patty paper. So ask for patty paper if you want to use it. Again, just take care to do it. Don't be too confident that you don't do the work. So that's reflections. Most, many of these use scale factor. Scale factor is need over no. Your need shape, your no shape, and, and the same as copy over original. Sometimes they're called a pre-image and an image, where the image is the same as the copy. How are we going to label the transformations? The copy or the image is usually labeled with the same letter. So if you have vertex A, and it, in its copy, the corresponding one would be A prime. We always keep them corresponding. So you can look at a, a, a picture of a dilation or one of the transformations, and you can tell immediately which one's the original and which one's the copy. One time on the state test, that's all you had to know to get the question right. Don't assume it, but just make sure. Uh, translation. Translation is the same shape, it's an isometry, but it moves over, it slides. So we have the slide here to remind us that translation is a slide. On the translations, when we worked those in class, we used matrices. There will be no matrices on this test. And we also used mapping terminology, which you may see. Here's an example here, the translation of this shape is to be uh, right six places and down one place. So left and right, of course, is x. Up and down is y. We could write that as mapping terminology like this. x, y goes to x plus 6, y minus 1. Again, there won't be any matrices on this, so you don't need to learn that to, to review that. Although you ought to know it, so you can use it if you want to once you get on it but you will not be required to use any matrices on this test. Rotations. Rotation is turning the image. Imagine the image on the edge of on a clock. So it could be pasted in the middle of the clock and rotating around. That would be when the center of rotation is inside the figure. So that would be like doggy with the center of rotation in the middle, rotating counterclockwise. Remember that counterclockwise is the default. This is clockwise. You can tell it's clockwise because it's the way the clock goes. So counterclockwise is the default. I would anticipate that for the star test, they will tell you which way they want you to go. So here's Froggy. 
This is a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. The other type of rotation is if clock, uh, do, uh, excuse me, doggy were caught on the hand of the clock. So he could rotate around this way. Like there's this point right here. That's the center of rotation. And he's rotating around the point. That is also a rotation. Remember how we drew a reference line from the figure. That would be doggy to the um, center of rotation and use that to find out the degrees of rotation. You choose one point and turn it and that's how you get it. That's how we did it in class if you'll recall. So that's rotation. Dilation. Remember dilation. It gets bigger, it gets smaller. Bigger is an enlargement. Smaller is a reduction. It's by a scale factor. Good news. You recall in geometry that we had all these interesting, wonderful, fun things to do. Like we'd take a shape and we'd turn it and we'd move it and we'd put it in a matrix and we'd turn it over again and we'd move it and we'd move it back and move it back and all that kind of stuff. No, we're not doing that in here. The center of dilation is always the origin for the eighth grade test. So that makes your life just a little bit easier. Let's see how that will work. So if I start with a couple of triangles that, I'm going, that are a dilation, we can recognize that this is a dilation by several things. The uh, corresponding vertices are collinear, and they're collinear with the origin. Remember, on the eighth grade test, it's always going to be the origin. So if it doesn't tell you what it is, don't say, oh, no, 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 I don't know how to do it because I, I don't know what the center of dilation is. Yeah, you do. It's the origin because it's the eighth grade test. It's not geometry. What do we see? That they all, all of the lines connecting the vertices are collinear with the origin, so you get a spider web effect here. The other thing you notice about a dilation is that the corresponding sides of the shapes are parallel. They are also proportional, which you're used to doing. So parallel and proportional. If you're asked if this figure is a dilation, yeah, it's a dilation. All the lines meet at the origin. And all of the shape, all the lines in the shape, I mean the, the connecting lines meet at the origin, and the uh, uh, line segments that are the sides of the shapes are parallel, the corresponding ones. This is a dilation. If anything's crooked, it's not a dilation. Let's see what the scale factor here is. Remember, it, the center of dilated dimensions, the theorems that we had in geometry are going to hold out and are going to be used at least to a significant extent on the eighth grade star. You have to be able to go from area to area and volume to volume. You'll probably have some problems that have something weird like that's not on the, the eighth grade things. Like it'll ask about the surface area of a cone and it, a little cone and a big cone. Well that's really geometry. You'll notice it's not on your star. Uh, equations chart and it's not one that you have to know. You just need to recognize that they're just talking about two surface areas and you know the scale factor. So if you had big puppy and little puppy, okay? And you know that the scale factor from little puppy to big puppy is two. In other words, little puppies Let's see, ear is five units long, big puppy's ear is ten units long. Okay, that's a measurement uh, that you can make with a ruler. It's one dimensional, that will give you the scale factor. Always the one dimensional ones give you the scale factor. Okay, and I done forgot what I said. Five to ten? Did I say times two? Oh, okay, so five, I'll say again, big puppy is 10, little puppy is 2, so scale factor is times 2. If we know that the scale factor is 2, scale factor has to do with the linear measurements, the one dimensional measurements, and then you use it in two dimensions or three dimensions, but it's still scale factor based on the one dimensional shape. So if I know that the area 
of little puppy is 12 units and the scale factor is 2, I don't have to know the dimensions. I don't have to calculate it. All I need to know is the scale factor. Scale factor is 2. Here, little puppy is uh, area, surface area or plano area of 12. The big puppy up, is little puppy's 12 times the scale factor once times the scale factor twice are 48 square units. So how would that work? I say puppy to say it works for any shape. Let's look at it with something a little bit more mundane that you might actually see on the test. So we established on the previous slide that this scale factor is 3. So if I'm going from area and I don't, yeah, you know, I could sit down and calculate all this out and figure out what the area was. But other, because it's on a grid. When it's not on a grid, you can't really do that. You'd need dimensions. If the area of the red triangle is 8 and the scale factor from the red to the green is 3, then we'll take the area of 8 times the scale factor once for one dimension, the length of the width, and again for the other dimension. Or you can say that this is the scale factor squared. So that will be 8 times 9 which is 72 square units. Go directly from area to area. The scale factor, we still say that it's 3. We square it because there are two dimensions, so it's to the second power, or we use it two times. If you're, if you're rough on this one, go back to the website and look again at the scale factor PowerPoint. For volume, okay, here we've got little froggy. We know that ear of little froggy is 5, ear of big froggy is 10, and little froggy um, well, we'll let's say little froggy's volume is 20. Scale factor is from 5 to 10. It's always the one-dimensional measurement length, the length of froggy's ear. Uh, excuse me, froggy, doggy. The, re the length of doggy's ear is 5 for small doggy is 10 for big doggy. So going from small doggy to big doggy is a scale factor of 2. If little froggy's volume, that's three dimensions, length times width times height, if little froggy's volume is 20, no matter what his shape, doesn't matter, and we go to big froggy, how are we going to do that? Well, we know that little froggy is 20. Uh, volume, cubic units, we'll do times the scale factor, once for length, once for width, once for height, or the cube of the scale factor. So that would be 27 times 20, which is 540 cubic units, is the volume of big doggy. All right, who's whose ear is still twice as long, which is still the scale factor. Hello, Froggy. Oh, Froggy, Doggy, quit calling me Froggy. Why are you doing that? I'm a dog. Can't you tell frogs are green? Okay. Bye, Doggy. Oh, you look so cute. So in volume again, volume to volume. So here's the more mundane. Well, how am I going to find the scale factor? Let's say this is not the same scale factor necessarily. We could count it because it's on a grid, but let's just use base to this. Okay, the scale factor, hmm, going from red to green, well, the scale factor Square, cubed, cubed, because it's three dimensions, length times width times height. So that means it's going to be the cube root. 
Huh. Okay, well, how am I going to? Oh, well, look. Let's simplify that first. Reduce the fraction, so that will be the cube root of 8 over 1, divide them both by 10, or the cube root of 8, which is 2. So we find that the scale factor to go from this volume to this volume, and that should say V, sorry, is 2. How did you find it? By taking the cube root. If it were area, you would take it by taking the square root. Remember, if you want to do the cube root on your calculator, that calculator does square root really quickly and easily, but to do cube root, you're going to want to use the little rooftop arrow up button right here. And just recall that cube root is the same thing as raising it to the one-third power. So that's how you would do it. The carrot, the up arrow, up arrow thing right here, that one there, to the th one-third power is the same as the cube root. I don't think about, oh, spatial visualization. I need to finish my little chart. My little chart. Okay, here's my little chart. Um, Y'all folks are proud graduates of Algebra 1, and you're most of the way successfully. This is a continuation of a review of transformations for the 8th grade star for geometry students. Y'all have all made it sound safely through Algebra 1, proud graduates of Algebra 1, good grades on the EOC, most of the way through geometry. I'm assuming that you know when you have a coordinate that the X goes left and right and the Y goes up and down. I'm hoping, 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 hoping. Okay, one more thing we'll talk about here is the possibility of a three-dimensional spatial view. That's this portion of your chart. And I'm going to do this part right here. And here it is on um, big so that you can see what's happening. What does it mean? Four, three, one, two. Okay, you're supposed to pile blocks up. So where the four is, you're supposed to pile up four blocks. Yeah? Okay. Get a look at it like this. Four blocks piled up. Then that's a three, so you're supposed to pile up three blocks. And a one and two. So this structure looks like that. That's what this structure looks like. So if I come and notice a little bit, you can see right there the four, the one, four, three, one, two, and it's piled up and it looks like that. Take a couple of views on it. You notice here you have what we call elevations, these two. It's a side view as though it were just all there were. Let's look at the elevation. The first one you have there is the side view, which is the left side view. If you look at your little chart, oops, okay, there we go. That looks like what you got on your chart. Okay. That's the left side view. We turn it to the front view looks pretty much like that. Okay. The other view that you have there, so these are elevations and they're of one side. You can tell that this is the left side that's printed there because the taller one is on the left, but when I turn it around to the right side, now the taller one is on the right. Another view that they give you is the one that's in the center, which is an isometric drawing simulating three-dimensional. So the one that you have there looks about like that. Okay, So you can see that it's a three-dimensional type of drawing 
that, that pattern of dots is called isometric dots, and it's good for doing this type of stuff. So, if you have a question on this on the star, you will not be allowed to have blocks to pile up. They're testing whether or not you're able to do it in your mind and turn it and see what it looks like and match it up. So, just practice a little bit. In class, we had some practice on some pop cubes. If you haven't done that, come and do it so that you can practice putting together three-dimensional items and looking at the different elevations. And here ended this lesson. <laughs>